Hi everyone, well today's review is going to be on the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation. And I purchased this recently just on a whim. I mentioned in a previous video that I've kind of been on a foundation kick lately. I've reviewed several lately, talked about several. And there was just something about this that I wanted to try. I didn't really have the urge to try it when it first came out. Um, and I'd heard kind of mixed reviews on it. So I ended up purchasing it in the shade Nude. And I was kind of debating between a few shades at first and um, this is actually a foundation that was not recommended for me um, through the Sephora foundation finder so there wasn't any shade recommended when I'd put in some other shades uh, that did work for me so I just went on the site and I'm looking at it right here and just kind of hovered over the shades looking for like my shade and undertone I was kind of between the two I was thinking I was going to get uh, I knew porcelain which is like the third shade in I believe there's 18 shades Porcelain was the third shade and it says fair with neutral to pink undertones. Well, I was afraid the fair would be a little too fair. So then the next one I thought that would work with the right undertones was vanilla. And it says fair slash light with neutral to pink undertones. So it ended up being between vanilla and nude. And again, nude is light with neutral to pink undertones. So I ended up going with nude and it's one of those it's probably just a hair too dark for me right now, but once I start self tanning, it'll be fine. So I didn't want to have something too light. So I went with nude and it looks like this and you can see in the demo, it actually looks really good on. Um, and I was just afraid, you know, of it oxidizing possibly. If it did that, I knew it'd be too dark, but it did not oxidize thankfully. So it is um, $39. It's your standard one fluid ounce. It's a beautiful, you know, frosted glass bottle. It has really pretty, you know, with the born this way and gold, the Too Faced, has a pump, so it's a really pretty bottle. And I like that, you know, it's a decent price point. It's not real uh, inexpensive, but it's not the most expensive I've ever purchased either. So to me, it's like a good mid-range at $39. So it says it's an oil-free foundation for natural looking, full coverage, and a beautiful radiant finish. Born This Way is an oil-free foundation that masterfully diffuses the line between makeup and skin. For coverage so indetectable you can't see the makeup or the imperfections. That's pretty big claims, I think. <laughs> Just a natural looking, luminous, flawless complexion. The revolutionary formula is infused with a potent combination of coconut water to naturally replenish moisture levels. Nature's resilient alpine rose to brighten the skin's appearance and promote elasticity. And hyaluronic acid for a smoother, more youthful appearance. And Now, you all know, and you'll see in the demo, I feel like I'm someone who has texture issues. I have hyperpigmentation. You know, I'm 42. So I have aging skin. I feel like if I could put a foundation to the test and it look good, then that's huge because you know, many of us as we're aging have a really hard time finding something that works for us. I love where it says a coverage so undetectable you can't see the makeup or the imperfections. Now, that's stretching it a little bit for me personally, but I have to say, and I am wearing it today obviously, I can look in a mirror up close and it's not like I see the makeup. And it's not like I see things that I normally do with other foundations. Like for me, usually the very first thing I notice is right here. So I'm starting to get some fine lines right here and makeup will settle there immediately. And some foundations make my skin even look worse there. So if that's the case, then I don't even bother with that one because you know, who needs that, right? Well, next I look for coverage because I have a lot of hyperpigmentation um, just from sun damage. And then I have some old acne, you know, marks fading. So I like, you know, medium to full coverage. So this does definitely gives you that. I would say if you apply it with a beauty blender, which is how I did it today, then you'll get more of the medium to full. You can build it up. I tried to build it up in a few places and I found it to build up pretty easily. You'll see in the demo, I apply it with a brush. Definitely get a more full coverage look that way. Now it's gonna be up to you, your preference, whether you like a brush or certain types of brush or the beauty blender. I typically like the beauty blender and especially in the winter because I just feel like it adds that little bit of moisture to the skin and it kind of blurs out, you know, maybe any fine lines or something, but you definitely don't get as heavy of coverage as you will with the brush. And some foundations, I feel like if they are meant to be full coverage, I actually think you need a brush because then it's like it works with the foundation the way it's supposed to. And so let's go ahead and cut to the demo of me applying it. And I talk a little bit throughout there um, and then we'll chat back at the end and I'll give you my final thoughts. And I decided um, to use a brush today. So, I did two pumps, but that looks like a lot. But, and the color actually doesn't look too bad, so here's hoping for the best. It 
it spreads really easily. I like that. And the coverage is really great. I think actually this color, unless it oxidizes, this color is actually going to be really good. I feel like a little goes a long way, which is awesome. It's weird looking at it on my hand. I feel like it looks really uh, orangey and warm, but on my skin, I don't think it does. And I just always take the excess. I don't add more, but I just put the excess um, over my eyelids. Kind of evens them out a little bit. Kind of acts like a little bit of a concealer for the unevenness. Wow, this coverage is really good. I probably used a little bit too much on my forehead, though. I can, I can see it. So, see what I mean about, look how orangey it looks. I don't know why, because again, I don't think that's translating on my skin. I'm not sure, of course, how to look on camera. Let me see here. I'm going to try to buff this in a little bit better on my forehead, because like I said, I can see it, and I think that's just my fault, because I used probably a little too much, because it's one of those, definitely a little goes a long way. You don't need that much. Um, so that is great. And sometimes what I'll do is just take a dry beauty blender. And I've mentioned this in a video a long time ago. Um, when it's dry, I will just go over anywhere that I feel like might get cakey or maybe I use too much prod product. Anywhere maybe that you have fine lines and wrinkles. And it kind of soaks up the product, you know, just like rolling it over. So if you didn't know that tip or hadn't seen that older video of mine. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom you in. I can tell looking at the mirror when I look up close, I can kind of see it on my nose a little, but that just may be, um, what's I've been blowing my nose a lot lately, so that could happen with any foundation, I feel like. So my sinuses have just been a little haywire lately. So let me zoom you in. Okay, so here's what it looks like up close. Again, we'll see on camera what it looks like, but it looks, in the mirror looking at it, it looks, pretty good. Um, I'm a little more red right now here just because I have some past blemishes that are still um, a little red. But other than that, I mean, it covered really good. I'm really happy with the coverage. It feels, and I wouldn't say real tacky, but a little bit. It's starting to dry though, I can tell. Um, but it just, honestly, it just feels like skin. And typically, um, when that happens on my nose, what I'll do is just take like a powder foundation, like the Becca or um, the MAC Studio Fix, and just add it to my nose. It evens it out then. The redness isn't showing through. It doesn't look, you know, a little speckly from it being dry. So, um, but other than that, you know, first impression here, putting it on, it looks pretty good. And I feel like the color uh, looks pretty good, at least going on. Now, again, I hope it doesn't oxidize. And I'll... You know, I've not been self-tanning or anything yet, so I'll bronze up my neck a little. It's always really um, kind of white. You can see right here, and then this is more like the regular color of my neck. So, anyway, um, so far, I really like it. Okay, so as you can see from the demo, it actually gave me really good coverage. I did, I think, got, you know, a little bit too much on my forehead, but I took care of that, and it looked great. I did take a picture throughout the day. I would say... Later on that night, maybe like seven or eight o'clock at night. So I'd had it on, you know, like eight hours or more than eight hours. But I feel like the photo didn't really do it justice because the lighting's not as good being, you know, at night. And I have like an overhead light creating shadows. And I even tried to take it in front of my makeup mirror here. But then you were just seeing the illumination of the makeup mirror, like in certain spots. And then it almost made it look like oily even though it wasn't oily and I had some highlight with it and some bronzer that was a little glowy you know when I first put it on so I just felt like that wasn't an accurate picture to show you but I can say it lasted all day and it looked great the only place I started seeing it slightly break up was around my nose my sinuses have been bothering me lately so I've been blowing my nose a lot so of course you know most foundations are not going to stand up through that it did start slightly separating only on one side of my chin I don't know if that was just 
my application process or something specific I was doing to make it break up, but it wasn't real noticeable. It was one of those you could seriously have just taken your finger and patted it and it would have looked perfect. The cheeks looked absolutely perfection. Nothing like smearing, nothing breaking down. It looked as good as the minute I put it on. And it's crazy to me thinking how good the foundation looked and it didn't really change throughout the day. It definitely does have, like it says, that kind of radiant appearance. It's not going to necessarily be a matte finish. It's not overly glowy though, because sometimes I feel like that can just bring attention to flaws sometimes, but it's not going to be a total matte look either. To me, it's just, like it says, a very natural, pretty finish. It's what you want your skin to naturally look like, almost like you're glowing from within. So the only highlight I have on today is a little bit on the tops of my cheeks. So if you're seeing, you know, anything else, that's all just the foundation. So I just have to say, I am completely impressed with this foundation. And I'm one of those, if you watch a lot of my videos, I don't impress easily with a lot of products. Sometimes I feel like I'm one of the toughest critics out there with things, but I do try to give, you know, pros and cons to things. Like, you know, maybe if something didn't work for me, I try to give you, you know, will it work for you? So I have to say, I absolutely love this. It is really going to be my go-to foundation. I can tell you that it looks great with aging skin, at least for the issues that I have being fine lines and wrinkles, some old, you know, depressed acne scarring. I do have a video on that. So if you've seen that for my Juvederm for acne scarring, you totally know what I'm dealing with under here on my chin area. I think it looks great. You guys let me know what you think of it. If you've tried it, if you're going to try it. To me, this is probably one of the best foundations I have tried in a long time. And that is saying a lot because I don't sing the praises of too many foundations or products in general. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you found this helpful and we'll see you next time. Bye.